Well, I feel good when I delivered some groceries this morning. Yes. But look at this, babe. It's it's cut it off. What'd you do? Nothing. It's just the Facebook does it differently. See him down at the bottom. Hello, Sarah. Mary Ann, good to see you. It's, it's cutting it off. I don't know now. I never expected that. It's got to tilt, tilt back this way. The only way to do that That's is this one. Okay. Who else is on there? Sarah. Saw Sarah. Okay. Sarah and someone who's ahead of her, I didn't know. Mary Ann. All the way from Pennsylvania. Somewhere in Pennsylvania. Hey, Ray, what goes into effect tomorrow? Or is it something all the stay home or we're going to cure or something? Uh, there, yeah, there's new stay at home orders. I'm not exactly sure what they are. Yes. All right, Gracie, come on up here. Okay, somebody else has joined, but I don't know who it is. All right. It didn't say? No. Just okay. a picture. Yeah, then it gives then it gives a name after that. Okay. All right. Well, good morning, Saints, and welcome to the CWW, the Church Without Walls. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday in the beginning of Holy Week. Today's service will be different in many ways. First of all, of course, because we're doing it this way, instead of gathering for celebration. We'll also not have the usual liturgy. It's a somewhat different liturgy this morning. However, I have Gracie with me to help as liturgist in reading of Scripture. I only have a little bit of a sermon which is mostly something that I'll read that I borrowed from Jill Duffield. That will be in between two sections of Scripture. The Scripture readings will be for Palm Sunday, then the sermon, and then the Scriptures for Passion Week to tell the story. Since this is the beginning of Passion Week and we'll not have the Monday Thursday service that we usually do, We'll go through the scripture all the way through to the crucifixion. We'll allow the scripture to tell the whole story. So please prayerfully join with us in worship through the word of God this morning. Though we cannot hear you, there are places where you can respond. And I ask that you do so in the comfort of your home. Amen. Our opening scripture this morning is from Zechariah. Chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We praise you, O God, for your redemption of the world through Jesus Christ who entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along the way. Let these branches be signs of his victory and grant that we who carry them may follow him in the way of the cross, that dying and rising with him, we may enter into your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Liturgy of the Palms. This comes from Psalm 118, 1 through 4, and then 19 through 29. 
O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord, O Lord. We pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The Gospel from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the feet, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Let us pray together, responding with, Hear our prayer. For all who are in need of healing, Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For all who are disabled by injury or illness, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are troubled by confusion or burdened by pain, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those whose increasing years bring weariness, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are about to undergo surgery, Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For all who cannot sleep, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who practice the healing arts, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those on the front lines trying to stop the virus, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. We join our voices together in the words that Jesus taught saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You can be seated. On that day long ago, when Jesus rode in Jerusalem on borrowed transportation that had been procured by fumbling, denying, betraying followers, some of the crowds called out in joyous belief. Others questioned what all the fuss was about. But none of them really knew what was to come just a few days later. The whole scene was a mixed bag of human emotions, opinions, understanding, and perspectives. Isn't that what we have going on today? A mixed bag of opinions, emotions, perspectives, and understandings. Even those who named Jesus a prophet from Nazareth didn't get it completely right. Even the disciples, obedient and dutiful in following Jesus' direction, couldn't be fully prepared for the suffering soon to come. In all of their complicated humanity, they did the best they could in that moment. And so too do we. We're doing the best we can with what we know. That's the best we can do. Jesus makes his way to Jerusalem and the cross, knowing all too well our shortcomings and our failures. Jesus makes his way to Jerusalem and the cross because of our shortcomings and failures. Jesus knows, even if we do not, our need of him. As we grieve what is lost this year, the waving of palms that we would normally have in this church today, the joy of singing with one another in the sanctuary, ah, how I miss that. The touch of handshakes and hugs. Our many activities that have been canceled or put on hold. Kids not being able to graduate from high school or college. Sports teams, baseball not being played. Kids not having spring practice in football. All the things that seniors look forward to have been taken away. We grieve those things. However, we can be sure that Jesus meets us where we are, no matter how we are. Jesus will not stop on the outskirts of Jerusalem or on the fringes of our lives. He enters fully into the city, knowing what's to come. He enters fully into our lives, knowing our doubts, knowing our fears, knowing our concerns, our failings, denials, betrayals, our misunderstandings and our disappointments. He comes humbly toward us, accepting whatever we offer. Whether it be a palm branch, a tattered coat, exuberant praise, or even mumbled hope, knowing that soon He will go to the cross for our sake. Our world, our lives, the whole city is stirred up right now. Then, as now, Jesus comes into places and spaces of upheaval, injustice, sickness, need, and evil. He came into this shaken up earthly realm to save it, to bring healing and wholeness, forgiveness and mercy and grace upon grace. The word for stirred up in that passage is found only five times in all of the New Testament and three of those are in Matthew's gospel and all three of those occurrences relate to his passion and resurrection and how it stirred up the city. This stirred up city will be the site in just a few days where the earth will shake Rocks will split and the temple curtain 
will be torn in two. This celebratory scene, teeming with people, will soon be deserted. Jesus alone, with only the women remaining. The earth will shake yet again. The stone will be rolled away and the guards will be the ones who tremble in fear at the sight of the dazzling angel. All this upheaval, cities stirred up with anxiety, illness, fears, countries heaving with disasters natural and unnatural, human beings reeling from forces well outside of their control, and still Jesus will not be stopped. His mission will not be thwarted. He enters into the fray right in the midst of what's going on. Vulnerable, humble, so close he can see our faces, he can hear our petitions, and he feels our swirling emotions. Nothing can stop Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Nothing can stop the coming of the Son of God. Nothing can prevent Jesus from being present in the midst of all that shakes us and stirs us and causes us to tremble. Soon the earth will shake and the rocks will split and the temple curtain will be torn in two. The crowds will disappear. Even Jesus' closest friends will abandon him. All will seem lost and dead and beyond redemption, but only for a while. For three days is all, when time will seem to stand still. Then God, or as the scripture says so often, but God, but God, the intervention of God, then God will upend all of our expectations yet again and those tasked with keeping Jesus in the grave will be the ones shaken and rendered useless because nothing can stop Easter. Nothing can stop the resurrection. Nothing can stop the new birth within you and within us. Glory be to God. Yes, it's powerful. Eternal God, whose word silences the shouts of the mighty, quiet within us every voice but your own. Speak to us through the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may receive grace to show Christ's love in lives given to your service. Amen. Amen. From Isaiah 50, 4 through 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment, 
and the moth will eat them up. From Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. <clears throat> Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted from grief, my soul and my body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. Because of all my adversaries, I have become a reproach especially to my neighbors, and an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have been forgotten like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror on every side, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. From Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. From Matthew chapter 27, verses 11 through 54. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, let him be crucified. And he said, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, 
And they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him. And they took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes back on him and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge and filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But others said, wait. Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. And I declare to you this morning, truly, Jesus is the Son of God. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve one another. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for joining us. Thank you guys for coming out and being part of the congregation this morning. We look forward to Easter Sunday and what it may bring. Ready? We're done. Can I offer a prayer? Yes, sir. Is that open over there? That's my no, you have to come up here. Is that turned off? Yeah, no, it's on. Oh, what is it here? Fine. Everybody will. Oh, holy God, we come before this morning.
grace today. We are humbled by this sickness, this disease, this virus. We ask that you will anoint the minds of the scientists, the biologists, the doctors, and also the leaders of our nation and of the world so that they make good decisions. And we ask this in your holy name. And we ask for blessing upon our church and on our pastor and everybody in here. We ask that you will send down the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost, and guide us and guide this church and guide this nation and this world. We ask this in your name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.